This is iOS Decoded for iOS 18.4 Developer Beta 2. In this video, we consider over 20 new changes and features. If you want to know everything new about Beta 2, this is the video for you. If you appreciate videos like this, be sure to hit that thumbs up button that helps other people know that it's legit. So to start off, let's talk about the build number for 18.4 Beta 2. That is going to be 22E5216H for those keeping score. 18.4 Beta 2 is also the first beta release for this right here, the iPhone 16e. And folks, I have a lot of thoughts about this device right here, so stay tuned because I have a full video on that coming in the next day or so. But no doubt one of the biggest new 18.4 features is this right here, new emoji. So here's just a rundown of all the new emoji. You get this one, the face with bags. And I have to say, I can unfortunately highly relate to that one right there. There's also the new fingerprint emoji, followed by a leafless tree, which is interesting. Something for everyone, let me tell you. And speaking of something for everyone, there's a new root vegetable, which I'm guessing that's a turnip. The next one is the harp, which I'm surprised that there hasn't been one until now. And the shovel, I'm digging it. And then finally we have the splatter emoji. So these are the seven new emoji in iOS 18.4. What do you guys think about it? Let me know down below in the comments section with your thoughts. And 18.4 beta 2 brings forth the Apple Vision Pro app for iPhone, which Apple recently teased. It also brings forth the new Spatial Gallery app for Apple Vision Pro, which is pretty cool. So if you're an Apple Vision Pro user, you definitely are going to want to check this out. It gives you this nice new spatial gallery expose. You can take a look at behind the scenes footage from favorite Apple TV plus shows and more. Now, as someone who recently sold his Apple Vision Pro, I'm curious, does anyone watching this have an Apple Vision Pro? Let me know down below. So this is my iPhone 16e and you notice there is no camera control button on the side like you get with the iPhone 16 and 16 Pro. Up until now, that would have meant no visual intelligence access, but with 18.4 beta 2, you can now access visual intelligence from the action button on not just the iPhone 16e, which already had that feature, but now you can access visual intelligence for the action button from any iPhone that has an action button. So let me show you how it works really briefly. So here's my iPhone 16e. I press the action button. If I just press it once like that, it tells you to hold to open, but you can see the little preview for visual intelligence. So if we press and hold, now it launches directly into visual intelligence, just like it would if you press and hold the camera control button on an iPhone 16 device or 16 Pro device. So here is visual intelligence. So let me just show you briefly one thing or a couple things it can do. So here's a deck of cards. I can just tap search. It's gonna perform a Google reverse image search right there, searching and it finds that exact deck of playing cards, which you can purchase. So that's cool. But you can also use chat GPT directly within visual intelligence and get details about whatever it sees in frame. So it's asking chat GPT, what is this? It's going to say, this looks like a deck of premium quality playing cards, but visual intelligence can do other things like recognize plants and animals and add dates to your calendar from flyers and stuff like that. So here it recognizes this plant. Just tap it like that for more details. So this means if you have an iPhone 15 Pro, you can finally use visual intelligence as well. Should have already been able to, but. And now there is a visual intelligence control center shortcut as well. So if we open up control center, add a control, if we scroll down a little bit here, you're gonna see Apple intelligence and Siri. So now you see the visual intelligence shortcut right there that you can add to your control center. So that's going to be super handy, right? So you don't even have to use the action button to invoke visual intelligence. Now you can do so directly from the control center, just like this. So you just swipe down, tap, and there we go. Now we're in visual intelligence. And since that's a control center toggle, you can also add that directly to your lock screen. So we're just going to replace the camera button with the visual intelligence option there. Tap done. And now when we tap and hold on visual intelligence right there from the lock screen, it launches just like that. Pretty cool. But there's also a new talk to Siri control center shortcut. So previously we had type to Siri shortcut. 
And now we have the talk to Siri shortcut. So again, right here under Apple intelligence and Siri. So all you do is just tap that to add it. And there we go. Talk to Siri, just tap it and it invokes Siri. So you don't have to press the side button to do so. Now you can do so directly from your control center. And again, this being a control center toggle, you can add that to your lock screen if you wish to. So I'm going to add talk to Siri to replace one of my lock screen controls. And there we go. So just press and hold to invoke Siri right there from the lock screen. And in the shortcuts app, I can use a visual intelligence Siri shortcut. So you can see it right here. So if I just tap on that, it will launch directly into visual intelligence. So I can combine that with other actions or what, whatever the case may be. So you just tap it like that to launch. And if you tap the ellipsis, you can edit. There's also an updated adaptive noise control icon. Now I'm not sure if this is a bug or not, but apparently Apple has changed the color of the adaptive toggle for AirPods. So you can see it right there. Now it's just sort of a muted gray color with the gradient. We also found a new analytics deny list pertaining to visual intelligence. So this appears to be a list of items that if detected by visual intelligence, it won't send analytics about that. In beta one, Apple added priority notification support to iOS. Now in beta two, they've updated a little bit to be able to specify the apps that work with prioritized notifications. So not only do you have the ability to turn this feature on, you can also toggle the feature on an app by app basis. So when you turn it on, you can go in and say, Hey, I don't want it for two player games, Amazon, MX, etc." And in the mail app, you'll find a new mail categories explainer right there at the top. And it tells you to tap the little ellipsis to learn more. And that gives you more details on the categories and the type of email that you'll find in each category. There's also a slightly tweaked UI with the play slash add button in the TV app. So a new play button, new add button. There's also some little subtle changes there. For instance, you can see when new episodes are airing, etc. And now you have granular app settings actions via shortcuts. So this is sort of a prelude to some of the more advanced Siri functionality coming in the future. But here you can see really granular changes that you can make via shortcuts to the various apps listed here. For instance, with Safari, you can go in and change the state of selected Safari settings or with news or with maps, you can go in and change specific low level settings there. So I'm going to add that in for Safari and then I can either turn it off or on or toggle it. And then I can choose the actual setting I want to target. So autofill or block pop-ups or close tabs, open links, etc. I can even change the search engine if I want to do something like that. So let me just show you that and see how that works. So if I tap search engine, I'll be able to go in and designate which search engine I want to change it to. So let's go ahead and do that. And now you'll see search engine, just tap there. And then you can choose the search engine just like that. And now when I execute this action and I go and do a search, you're going to see now it is using DuckDuckGo. Hopefully this is something you never have to use, but in beta two, there's indications that Apple's going to allow users to share feedback about crash detection. You also find a new more button in the Apple wallet app. So when you tap that little button here at the top, the little three dots, you can access orders, subscriptions and payments and access wallet settings. And friend of the show, Aaron P613 on X has found evidence that a future iOS 18.4 beta will add support for NACS and Apple Maps for EVs. Of course, NACS is the Tesla style charging plug that is now considered the standard for electric vehicle charging. And 18.4 beta 2 lets you now reorder utilities and media types, which is super handy in the photos app. So if I go to media types, you see all these different types. Perhaps there's one that I specifically like to use. Well, if I use ProRes, for instance, more than anything else, I can just drag that to the top. Now, when I tap done and I go back out, I'm going to see that at the top and it's going to be much easier to access there. Same thing goes for utilities. So if there is something in utilities that I use more than others, I want to drag that to the top. So it's easily access accessible within those first four that are available on the main page. So I'm going to drag up imports there, tap done, go back. And now I see imports at the top as one of the first four. Super handy little feature.
And it looks like there's a new retouch feature coming to cleanup for the Photos app. Now this doesn't appear to be launched just yet, but of course you guys know cleanup is an Apple intelligence feature that allows you to go in and make modifications to photos, remove things, even sensor faces and stuff like that, as you can see there. But apparently there's gonna be some more advanced retouching features for photos. And of course you guys know Apple has Shazam integration directly in the control center so you can quickly identify music. But there's definitely something else cooking here that Apple's working on with regard to Shazam musical features. Yeah, and that's literally what it's called, musical features internal and external. But it looks like this is something related to improving song detection. And this is indicated by two new ML models called Crema and Crepe. And in macOS 15.4 beta 2, we found new evidence of a new games related website. So if you go to this URL, it wants to open this thing called Game Trampoline. And apparently this isn't yet online. In fact, the subdomain games.apple.com is not currently live, but it alludes to the fact that this is something that Apple will be launching soon. So folks, that has been a look at iOS 18.4 developer beta 2. Again, if you appreciate this video, be sure to thumbs up and subscribe for more like this. Hey, and also check out these other videos. You might like these too. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.